Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss whether or not the ABV Barrel Shop belongs on one of the most unique experiences in bourbon list. Woohoo! Miss Becca Sue, please join me welcoming my co-host Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Tim Swyatt, billionaire Ron Thompson, and Darren McRoy. Hey gang, what's up? What's up, guys? So, yeah, we've got the fun show today. We're going to be talking about is the ABV Barrel Shop one of the most unique experiences in bourbon? We'll get to that after the break. For right now, Darren said there's something you want to talk about. What is that, Darren? So, hypothetically, you walk into a brand new chicken wing place. Okay. What what flavors are you going to get without any knowledge? Like, what's your go to? How hot? What do you like? Okay. Um, I think it's always good to get their uh base wing uh and say hot I, the hot is the level i don't like the extreme hot f- fire out your ass hot i just like the hot and uh, that would be good and then i'll know where we're at and then you can get into some of the other ones and sometimes uh i like you know the the dry rubs so like uh garlic parmesan or something like that dry rubs or, or wings are good yeah steve yeah. if it's a new shop would you use your patented chicken wing eating effort for contests on that one or would you take your time with it <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I use my chicken wing eating contest uh, move all the time. That's that's how I eat chicken wings. So yeah, <laughs> that's how you uh, do it. That's how I do it. Yeah, yeah. You get the flats. You turn them to the uh, opposite side. You grab the end. You, you can get the feel for where it is. Push straight down. In mouth comes out clean. Yeah, well, that's how I do it. That's how you do hey, it. I'm a professional. I, I've competed in the uh, <laughs> uh, Buffalo, New York uh, chicken wing eating contest. Yes. Yeah. How'd you do? Uh, second place in the amateur division, not in the professionals. Yeah. That sounds yeah. sounds like Pretty a good. quite the Joy, accomplishment. Joy, anyways, Joy Chestnut won on the uh, on the men's uh, the professionals, and Sonia the Black Widow Thompson won on the on the females. But yeah, I was getting some some tips from Eric Badlands Booker. Uh, he helped <laughs> me out with. Uh, Did you, you have this, a cool so. middle name uh, created? No. No, I just went up there, Steve Akeley, and it was cool because it was it's in uh, it's in like their amateur baseball uh, stadium, so it's kind of cool. A lot of people in there, and uh, it was a you know you're out on the stage. You know, it's my first experience on being on you know a stage with a full stadium, and uh, you know an announcer and announces me, and it was announcing other people, you know, from Syracuse, New York, everybody's cheering him and all that. And then when he said Steve Akeley from St. Louis, they booed me. <laughs> the fucking New Yorkers booed me. <laughs> I, Sounds I, on brand. I thought it was just all That's fun, bro. Right. We're in a goddamn chicken wing eating oh. contest. Nope. Yeah, yeah. They fucking New Yorkers were <laughs> boo. Fuck him. Fat then when dance. you stole second place from Fat Joe or something yeah, like yeah. that, who's local, then they got really yeah. pissed. You had to run yeah. out of there. Yeah. Uh, from the Food Network, you know, uh, Sunny, she was in that contest too. She was in the amateur division. So, but she was more. Wings. She was eating wings, but she's also hamming it up for the show. So this was a segment for the show. So she was. So she was, you know, goofing on it and stuff Perfect. like that. So yeah, she hmm. wasn't she wasn't trying to win, whereas I was trying to win. So yeah. How many wings did you get down and how much time? Uh 
I think it's like five minutes, if I remember correctly, and it's not by wings. They weigh it, so I can't remember how many wings I ate, but they it's all by weight. So they, they give you a tray, you eat through that tray, they take it back, and then they're weighing each one before and after, and then you get credit for the amount consumed. Not, uh, not how, by how many right. pounds wow. did you get? I don't remember actually now. Twenty seven, I think you said. Twenty seven pounds. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. So throw down some chicken wings. That's for damn but sure. The guy who beat me, by the way, beat me by a lot. So and he was, you know, just a regular size guy. I was way bigger than him. But uh, the people that can eat like that, that could just do it. So yeah. you know that guy wasn't nervous, right? Right. The hoochie -hoochie. He wasn't nervous at all. He knew he had it. He knew he had it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, the best part about. Lose. You the best part about mine was uh, the the warden gets nervous at stuff. Now it's never stuff involving her because she, well, first of all, she never does anything. So she got when I was on that stage, and then they start booing me. This gets her nervous. She has to like sit down. Uh, this is in the middle of a crowd. I mean, people are all standing up and all that. She, I see her walk over to like a wall and then sit down on the ground because she's gonna she's gonna faint. She's gonna she's gonna <laughs> drop. And uh, yeah, uh, she's had a lot of incidents. Uh, yeah, one time I. Uh, I had a, I had to get hernia surgery, and that's probably been 15 years ago now. I was probably about 40 at the time, and uh, so and uh, when you get hernia surgery, it's it's like below your belly button and uh, above your groin area. It's just like this area here, and it, when they cut it, it's not like a, just a straight cut. It was kind of a jagged cut. Anyway, I so saw they leave you at the hospital. Of course, they get you out like that day. Was, get the hell out of here, <laughs> and you got this big thing. It's almost like a diaper because it's oozing, it's bleeding, and all that kind of stuff. You know, you put it on there. And uh, I'm going down, I'm like, I got to get in the shower. They told you when you can take a shower because you can take that fucking thing off. And uh, uh, the wife comes in the shower. She's like, I, let me see that injury. And I said, uh, okay. And then I show it to her. She leaves. That. Now I'm not very steady on my feet at this point. I just had surgery. And I mean, it's <laughs> it's a big cut across your, your belly. I mean, it's it's a hard time moving. She she gets out, just walks out, leaves me alone in the shower area, not dressed or anything like that, and is like, I got to go lay down. I'm like, I need help. I can't even <laughs> bend over to put my underwear on or anything. I can't, I can't do this. And she's like, no, nope, I got to go lay down. So she goes and lays down in my sick bed, which was set up for just for me. Normally, of course, we're two people in one bed. But because I had the surgery, it was going to be just me because, oh, she just fucking gets in there, just goes in there and, ah, oh, I've taken a nap. From chicken Please wings to talking head. about acres growing, only <laughs> here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Steve, well, the honest part, she wanted to take a look to see if you got a haircut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she wanted to know what she's working with afterwards. She's like, I'm pretty sure he's hurting his shirt. I don't know what they come up with. What does this really mean? I don't know. And, and next, okay. All right. It's it's swollen, but it's okay. It's a good yeah, it's, it's yeah. intact. Everything's intact. Everything's yes. intact. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know um, for sure. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, chicken wings. I, Chicken wings. No, oh, what kind of chicken wings do you guys like to just eat the first time you go in somewhere? <laughs> I like a good, I like a good dry rub dipped in the uh, classic buffalo sauce. Okay, okay. Oh, that's dipped. where I'm going. Yeah. Okay, a little two for one deal. Okay, yeah, I like it. Right. Well, Becca, how about you? Um, I'm gonna probably go buffalo hot or um a honey barbecue, maybe just because sometimes. Hmm. Can't go wrong with a good honey barbecue. I know that. No. I'm with you there. No. I okay. So. Okay. Tim? No, I'm going right to that Asian zing. Give me that sweet yeah. and that heat. That, that, oh, that teriyaki, okay. that next level up. That's where I'm the going. Thai for. firecracker? One of those? There we go. Yep. Yeah. I want my I like, ass on fire after this one I like for a little bit. Give it a I good like shot. Yeah. Give it a clean out every now and then. Okay. All right. Oh, well, there you have it. Good input. Darren, you asked the question. What? Are, what's your thoughts? So my... um. I always get the hot buffalo because you have to. That's the oh, standard. Right? Yeah. That's the standard. And then I will get, depending on how many flavors, I'll either go three or four down from whatever the top flavor is and get some of those. Okay. And especially if it's above buffalo. If it's below buffalo, then I have to redo everything and it stress me out. But the I, I like the really hot stuff, too. So you get the normal buffalo and then you get something hotter and then you go back to the buffalo and it's mm -hmm. like, wow, this is really good. Is, is, so there is an eating strategy like do you start off mild and then go to hot and then go extra hot or no i just matter? do hot and then extra hot and then i go back and forth between the two usually mm. Mm. it's a good strategy honestly blue cheese or oh. ranch blue cheese ranch. Or ranch. Oh, big blue question. cheese blue cheese blue cheese i like blue cheese but blue cheese. i mainline ranch no it, i'll so tell you what it does wings. it does suck when they've got horrible blue cheese there's nothing right like somewhere no. with bad blue cheese 
and that you just, can't take that it's risk. It's That's why you have to order the ranch because it's always good. No, no. Sometimes I'm still gonna. I'm always gonna try yeah. out the blue cheese at least, yeah. and then if it sucks, then maybe I'll switch to ranch. But yeah, always, you can I'm tell even by cheese. looking at it too. You know, that that shitty blue cheese has a. It's just got a, a color. Tiny, mm. Yeah, it's not even appetizing. It's not it's even like appetizing. gray. It. Yeah, I, it's I got a weird it. gray color to it. And you see I it, you go. Nope, that's not the one. Do you guys eat the carrots and celery, or is that just oh, for no. show no. decoration? No, I eat the no. celery. No and carrots. Celery is fake food. It's like corn. I love uh, celery. I carrots, I'll take all day. No, no one, one likes one. celery. No one. Likes I love celery. celery. You hate no. celery. I like to dip Me? the celery in like the yes. extra sauce. I and fucking have a buffalo love celery. celery. Becca hates celery. She I me. love it. She That's said, on the like, show, I'm going to do a, a bit where I say I like celery. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going to allow that. And she's like, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care. Yeah. Celery with some blue cheese. Not that flavor. <laughs> I love celery. Celery yeah. with some blue cheese. Hell There's a bit right there. Yeah. There's the bit. There it is. Yeah. It's a bit. Yep. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah. It's, a style bit. it's her new bit. It's her latest bit. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> she doesn't my need fake, my fake celery love. Big celery is celery. She's getting paid off by big celery worldwide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why she's saying this. Oh, Checks in the mail sure. now. So <laughs> yeah. I will add this one though. If they have a gorgonzola option, take it. Yeah. I got yeah. a wing place that offers blue cheese, ranch, and gorgonzola. So I order a blue cheese and a gorgonzola. It's a different experience. It's well worth the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's, 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 what kind of fancy wing. ass wing places are you going that's to? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's right. I went right. to the melting pot. What, uh, what last in the night Chicago the, is going on there? Jeez. Oh, that's, uh, quiet. I've never seen you at my country club, bud. Yeah, I was <laughs> that, that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's the one with the staff. You well, know, <laughs> I sneak it out the bed. <laughs> oh, there you go. On that note, guess what, gang? It's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Becca. Oh, you're starting with me. Um, I have got. Um, Let's see what is who's this from the um the scotch and malt whiskey society oh. um is i guess it's the scotch I thought I, gra- I thought I grabbed the bourbon one but they just buy okay. barrels and do fun stuff with them but sure sure um this is what i'm gonna do i suppose okay Okay. Decent. Might be enough. I would have won the last show for sure. Though Becca won the last show anyway, but that was better than anything in the last show right there. So, all right, Tim, you're next. All right. I stumbled on a bottle of 10th Mountain American Single Malt, batch number one. Our friends over at 10 MTN Mountain on all the socials. <laughs> Tell me that came through. No. Nope. No, it didn't come through at all. Silent. When have we no. ever heard anything that you... Pop. Right, uh, <laughs> right. All right. Ryan Thompson, you're next. Choosing a bottle from the Northwest, a little westward American single malt whiskey tonight. Okay. Let's see here. That was good. I uh, heard it. Was it? <laughs> was it good? Was it good? Not good enough. <laughs> no, no. All right. Uh, I, know, Darren, Ryan, I have the same expression every time. Darren, you're next. I have a pick here from the ABV Barrel Shop, the Rye 3 16-year-old light whiskey that is out of stock, but... Oh. Ooh. Got her. Oh, I think that's the new lead. That's the new so. lead. I think you got her. Be careful, though. I've got Deer Hammer here. Oh, Pretty boy. full bottle. Pretty full. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Swide on the set. Yeah. Just nope. short. Just short. Fell short of the goal line. Darren's... <laughs> And apparently Ryan thinks it should be him, but it was Darren's. Clearly. <laughs> oh, it was Darren. Clearly. Cheers, gang. Ryan thinks it's Cheers, everyone. Him. Cheers. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, it's going to be time to talk about is the ABV Barrel Shop one of the most unique experiences in bourbon? We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. 
It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. Lock it in and rip off the knob. <laughs> the ABV Network. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Kathy, go ahead. Oh, I thought that was it. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. You are. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're asking, is the ABV Barrel Shop one of the most unique experiences in bourbon? Yes, we are. So, the a you guys have all been to the ABV Barrel Shop. Everybody on this podcast has been there. Yeah. And, I have. And you've done a lot of different things in bourbon. You've had a lot of bourbon experiences. Uh, does the ABV Barrel Shop deserve to be on the list of one of the uh, best things to do in bourbon? I think any liquor store leading the way in the whiskey category and uh, the unique offerings, such as your shop there, certainly has a, a, a place on the uh, most unique experiences in bourbon list. I am all for it. I, I give it a thumbs up. Yes, you should. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We got the Ryan Thompson endorsement. That's huge. That's huge. Wow. <laughs> Our PR person is just taking note of that right now. Putting it <laughs> out there. Putting it out there. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I what would, do you think? I would say yes as well. Um, because where else can you just taste so many unique barrel picks? Yeah. I mean... And and also and purchase them as well. Um, that's the other thing because there there are a lot of very large bars that have numerous barrel picks, but you can't buy them. Right. Right. You know. Um, so yeah, I'd say the fact that you can both try and buy is a pretty big deal. I don't know that even in Kentucky, if there's a uh, store that has more barrel picks than us. Now I hear that there's a couple. Uh, in Nashville that have a lot of barrel picks. They're bigger stores. They're full-service liquor stores versus us. We're just barrel picks. But that being said, you know, they have three Knob Creeks and uh, two, you know, Maker's Marks. You know, the, a lot of the normal stuff, whereas that's we... the boring stuff. That's why I said the unique that's stuff. Right. I don't want we, that. We have the unique stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah we try to you know, we try to stick out of, you know, having the, the you know, the the 11th, uh, uh, you know, Knob Creek pick in the market. But that's yeah. not who we are. We, we, we don't need that. So we want to be a place where you go and try something different so yeah that's something for sure i, I definitely think it's one of the most unique and uh, not only just in liquor stores it, it is probably one of the tops in that category because like liquor stores a lot of them are the same there's a few others out there that are doing something interesting or something different but what we do at the shop is just so out there and so different from anyone else but also like, just as a whiskey experience in like the st louis area you can't get much unique than the classes and everything that we do hanging out there yeah. 
I do think we have some of the most creative classes in the world of whiskey. I, th I think uh, we continue to reinvent ourselves and come up with new things and challenge ourselves to come up with something unique and fun. And uh, yeah, this past week we had five of, of, of seven nights. We had classes and they were all epic. I mean, they were all huge events. So yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. And so Darren, your 360 review is going to come in pretty positive after that uh, <laughs> statement there. So well done. <laughs> your performance review uh, is... I'm going to give you a five star on that one. Okay. Uh, so there you go. Uh, as a whiskey drinker, I'm not part of the shop. I am a syndicate member. Uh, so full disclosure there. Uh, you know, what I enjoy most about the barrel shop is the unique experiences that you cannot get all the basic stuff on the shelf. You don't have it. You, have, you don't know what you're going to walk into every time. And the try before you buy is a huge upsell. Uh, the ability to check inventory on the website as much as I know what I come down there because I've got a kid going to school down in that area. So I come down every now and then uh, to stop in and I make it a point to stop by because you never know what's going on when you pop in. Uh, and, uh, and I'm not talking about KK's pop-ins. That's a whole other story. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, oh. But KK does pop in to the APP barrel shop a lot and she stays oh, yeah. for a very long time. Mm. So you can see KK there. Uh, what I love most about the Barrel Shop, what makes it unique, is when I talk to folks in the industry, they're aware of it, and they say, when I'm in town, that's a place i got to try to get to, or I haven't been there yet, and i got to get there. Uh, and it's a, it's an account that they don't even have a single barrel there yet. But there may be something coming down, they want to do some business with them because they appreciate the single barrel experiences. And when you tie in the education and the uh, what I strive to, to do myself in some of these trains is the authenticity and the accuracy of the information being shared and meeting drinkers uh, of the category where you're at. Because drinking whiskey, especially single barrels, can be very difficult to start with if this is your start in whiskey, moving into the category. Uh, but there's a whole host of varieties and education and meet you where you're at. It's not pretentious at all. Uh, it's camaraderie. And I think the people are becoming family that yeah. uh, that mm -hmm. come through that place, which I think is very interesting. Not like any other liquor store at all. Right. Uh, and it's meet you where you're at and uh, buy something. There's no stupid questions at all, which I love. Yeah. 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 We had a group in the shop today. And uh, so there was six of them about three of them weren't into whiskey at all. They were just the wife's company hanging out for the day. And uh, but like, when they were leaving, they're like, this place feels like home. Like this is our first yeah. time in here. But you just sat down and had a conversation with us about whiskey and taught him a whole bunch of things. Changed the one guy's life a lot. He, he came in hating Rise and then left loving Rise. And so it was a little bit hard for him to swallow. But right. th I, just the right. looks on their faces makes me confident in what I said earlier. Yeah. We uh, we do treat people like they're at home. We Everyone gets greeted at the door. We talk them through. We find out their level of expertise, what they're looking for, and try to help them. And there's certainly some people want to come in, they just want to shop and find the stuff themselves, and we let them do that. But those that have questions and, uh, you know, uh, we, we help them find out whether it's a flavor profile or if they're just beginning their journey, we, we help we'll walk them through what uh, what uh, might be of interest to them. So, yeah, it's a, it's a true full-service liquor store where, where – and, and the people behind there are knowledgeable. We're not uh, – you know, when you go into certain places where they don't know anything other than they want to push you towards their store brands, mm -hmm. that's the only thing that they're they're tasked with doing. Uh, we're not that place. We're, we're a place where you can actually – legitimately talk whiskey and uh yeah and we're pretty proud of that we're also yeah. proud of the work we do in the local community we donate a lot to the als uh society uh chapter of st louis based on our friend rick brenner uh that's a personal uh commitment that uh that we have at the shop and then we also uh are involved in any any uh charity in the community uh you know we donate a, a card that's a good for a tasting for 10 with a class that is a 400 hundred dollar value and we get out probably 10 of those a week now yeah uh, we're in the middle of that Crazy. season now that 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 kind of slows down you know during the summer when people are on vacation and that then picks up again in the fall then kind of dies off again around christmas and people are doing other stuff but right now we're in the middle of the season where it's it's literally like 10 a week and uh yeah we help out everybody we can so that's that's a cool thing i'd even add too it's, it's almost like a destination you're, you're it's almost like a museum there too as well so just walking around the store, yeah, you're seeing a lot of bottles, but look at the different artifacts from the bourbon history, from oh. from the stuff that's going on around there. I mean, it's almost turned into a museum as well. That's true. That's I would true. argue. Uh, the store, just, just looking at the artwork that you guys have around there, all the tins, all the various different parts of history, uh, and, the, and the advertising history that's been lost. Yeah. Which you find when you display in the shop. Yeah. We collect those. I've always been a collector of that stuff, and 
I mean, I still have my best stuff at the house, but I put uh, a lot of cool things in the barrel shop for sure. So, yeah. Hey, Clay, what does that demographic look like for you? Like a uh, uh, first time guest coming in versus return? And uh, what is uh, kind of the level of knowledge within the uh, the whiskey or spirits category, et cetera? How, how does that look for you? Well, I, I you know, I, I think that uh, the, the ones that uh, are telling you they're new are literally, you know, literally are very new to it. Um, the whiskey is such a weird thing because people are very guarded and they, they are, the, and again, it goes back to this idea of, no matter what your level of, of whiskey is, if you're a whiskey fan, uh, probably within your group, you're the whiskey expert. And that can be someone who just casually drinks uh, and, or someone who goes to the bourbon trail one time and, you know, everybody at their office is like, boy, this person really knows. They went to Kentucky to go to the bourbon trail. Uh, you know, that, that, that that's, and, and, you know, it kind of, it, it kind of sends them up, uh, you know, pretty lofty in their mind. They're like, I, I know fucking bourbon. And then they can walk <laughs> it in with us. And this is all we talk about all day, every day. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a different level. And some of them are very uh, gracious and accepting of that and, and realize that there's a level of expertise there. And then there's other ones that think they just know more than you. They, you're, you, you're just lucky enough to have this place for however that happened. Uh, but, uh, you know, they know as much as you, if not more, because they've been to this place called the Kentucky Bourbon Trail one time. And, uh, and then there's the guys that come in. Oh, I have 30 bottles at home. I know everything about bourbon. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, that was... <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not pretentious. We don't, we don't yeah. ever call them out or be mean to them. We, we don't, we don't do that. We try to help them. And, and some people, some people are open to that. And then some people aren't. And no matter who it is, we want to be, we want to be nice and we want to help them, even if they're being a kind of a jerk to us. And um, what do you okay. think, uh, like what, 70, 80% of, of locals there within uh call it a 50 mile radius. And then maybe 20, 30% from, uh, out of towners that are that are in the area want to come visit. Uh, and say uh, hi. We're a unique. I think we're in a unique shop, particularly when you consider we're a thousand square feet. I would say that fifty percent are uh, from uh, locally, which which would be within fifteen miles of the store. That would be very local to me. Uh, that's probably that, uh, that's 50%, uh, probably then at least 30% are from greater St. Louis, which that's a huge area. Great. Yeah. You can, you can get in the car in our shop in Arnold and drive an hour and a half and still be in a place that m you guys, uh, the people on this podcast yeah. would call St. Louis. Right. Uh, so it's a, St. Louis is a very large geographic, uh, place. And, uh, we, we draw from that. We draw people from all over the St. Louis metro area. And that includes, you know, Southern Illinois, uh, you know, all the way up as far as St. Charles, St. Peter's, which are again, more than an hour from our store. Yeah. So we draw a lot of that. And then the, the final 20% is just literally people from all over. That could be from, you know, a couple hours away in Cape Girardeau, uh, which is Missouri to, uh, people flying in and making us a destination, you know, uh, you know, Tim from Chicago. There's, there's a lot of people that come in from all over the place. It amazes yeah. us when you ask people where I'm like, what part of St. Louis are you from? They're like, well, we're from Virginia. And I, my, my joke's always the same. Oh, that's the eastern part of uh, st louis you know, whatever it is it's always <laughs> waka waka yeah yeah <laughs> it plays well yeah what do you what do you guys get to say there darren uh I, I was gonna say if we go a week without seeing three people from cape Girardeau, it must have snowed or something because yeah. we i it, it is a trek it's like a two hour drive and yeah. we'll, we'll see them every week yeah we we do get a lot. We draw, do draw. That's a place where we probably should have a store. Maybe there, a lot of people drive up from there. So yeah, it's it's interesting. Nice, but, very uh, cool. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun business, and uh, we we enjoy. It. We're doing what we love, so that's a that's a cool thing. So uh, yeah, so it's and 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 just being able to pull people into what we do. I mean, we do have that thing called the syndicate and those people truly become part of the bourbon business. We're taking them on barrel picks. We're taking them behind the scenes at distilleries. We're, we're doing fun stuff, uh, unique events just for them. And I, I think that's pretty special too. Cause I'm always like, I'm probably one of the luckiest guys in the world. A guy who's a bourbon fan. I, I don't come to this as a business guy trying to come up with what's a cool way to make money. I come in as this as a bourbon fan who uh, was able to to somehow figure out a way to turn what I love into making it a job. And but I pull people in on this stuff. I could do all this cool stuff myself. I could never, I could never 
bring anybody to the Neely Family Distillery and just make it my own thing and try to make myself even cooler by saying all the cool stuff I do at Neely Family Distillery. Every barrel pick is just me going on it, and I get to go have fun with Royce and Becca, and I'll post photos, and I'm, I'm better than you are. But you know what? I bring the people from the shop with me, and they get to go experience and hang out with Royce and Becca and, and see the cool stuff. I mean, that's just how I do it. I, I, yeah, but I you want, get people addicted going there, too. Don't, don't act like it's all roses and flowers, and people <laughs> go there all the time just to see Royce and becca because you said it was a good idea once right right yeah and then she wears a different hat and people don't even recognize her so <laughs> no, so they have don't. no idea who i am right right no, oh, that's that? a different hat that's a different hat i don't know yeah, a different I, hat on i don't know who you are he know you are the hat i mean that makes you wonder <laughs> yeah i think he knew the hat yeah the fucking hat i guess don't make eye contact look at the hat don't look at the hat don't make wow. eye contact big hats, becca. was it the big hat i had a big oh. hat on but the big hat like yep, that's the big mean. hat yep yeah. yeah that was a look of 2023 yeah well in 2024 and behind well, Don't whenever, the, whenever the fuck i want right <laughs> yeah. yeah interesting uh yeah it's uh it's cool though and it's cool to think of that we got a place where you know becca might be there and there and when becca comes in it's i love it because she takes over she goes behind the bar starts helping people out it's awesome well like, someone's got to do it <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna <laughs> class the place up and when you're there yeah. okay i want to go to drink sure. board by you yeah but there you go this group that was there today was just randomly hanging out and a guy comes walking in and sits down at the bar all quietly and starts uh talking to me a little bit and talking to the group and then the, one of the guys says well i really love that deer hammer that i just tried and then when he's like well thanks i made that and these people's minds were absolutely blown and so that's another cool thing you never know who's going to be there yeah you do never know who's going to be in there. And I love it when it's just a random thing like that. That that was an event today or anything like that. No. Lenny's in town working the market and uh, pops into the shop today, sits down. And we get that kind of stuff all the time. It might be Robert Licorice or, uh, you know, you think about all the other ones that have been through and Steve Beam and Fonte and, you know, all these people from the bourbon industry come and just sit at the bar and hang out. Talk to well, us. Let's talk about the only bottled and bond certified establishment in Missouri as of right now. Or yeah. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, it is a big thing, and uh, yeah, we're we're pretty proud of that. So the fact that we carry all the bottle and bonds in Missouri, and uh, yeah, Ber Bernie Lubbers certified us. It's a it's a cool thing. So, but it also shows that we're part of the bourbon industry, and our competitors are not. They don't even know what the hell that is. They yeah. don't. They probably, they probably don't, don't even know, know what Lubbers bottle and bond is or or Bernie Lubbers. I mean, yeah. I, so. Um, it's interesting to me that, uh, yeah, they don't like us, but they also don't want to dedicate themselves to the world of bourbon. They just want to, uh, you know, cash in on it. So that means you're doing something right. Equally. That's all that means. There you go. There you go. Well, on that note, please come by and see us at the ABV barrel shop and, uh, check us out online, ABV barrel shop.com. We always have classes and events going on. I would encourage you to do that. So, you know, at a minimum too, sign up for our email distribution. That way, uh, we, uh, keep you in the loop with everything that's going on there and that's both bottle pick wise uh as well as of classes and events uh let's share well, where people can find us darren we'll start with you you can find me on instagram at the bourbon adventures <laughs> there's a glitch in the matrix for a second there uh he's fine though, though folks tim how about you uh, so, uh, you can find me at the barrel shop when I am in town as also a syndicate member number two that I like to remember, remind KK of as oh, much as I can. Angry. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, she gets real ticked about that. She was two minutes late, uh, to that phone call. You can also find me on Instagram at swyguy2112 and on YouTube at our flagship whiskey. All right. Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue one K no C's. All right. Uh, for me, I'm an easy guy. Ryan, did I ask you? Ryan. No, nope. what's eh. in the matrix, Ryan? My name is Skip. You can find me at uh, across all <laughs> socials at Skip. Tip MTN Whiskey and our website's tipwhiskey.com. One zero th whiskey with an e. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, abvnetwork.com. That's when you got to check out everything that we do is out there. We put all of our previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us. Don't forget, we talked about it today, the ABV Barrel Shop. So that would be fun for you to see you there. We've had all these bourbon celebrities. You know what's missing, though? You. You. Please come by and see us. <laughs> Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I just like to remind the audience to please give us a five star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing with you, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV network.
Great job today, gang. Fardance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Thanks, See everyone. Peace. Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing, the ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.